Hi everyone, welcome to today's lecture. Um, today I'll be talking about um, David Henry Wong's play, Yellow Face, and also um, Viet Nguyen's um, article that I asked you to read. Um, and it's called, I Love America, That's Why I Have to Tell the Truth About It, right? That's from the from Time magazine. Um, so I'm hoping that you've you've read the article and um, that you've also um, watched the play, right? Um, and so for for the lecture, I just want to there's there's a lot going on in Yellowface, right, in the play, um, and so in in terms of um, um, historical context and cultural context, right? Um, there's a lot going on that um, if you're not familiar with, with the history, um, it, it's it's kind of, you know, it, it's it's hard to, uh, or it might be hard to kind of, you know, make sense of, of what their, uh, what the, the play is uh, referring to, right? Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit about, you know, historical context, uh, cultural context. Um, to kind of make more sense of, of what's going on in the play. Um, I'll also talk about uh, David Henry Wong, kind of like um, his biography, right? Um, and, um, and his role in, in, in the Asian American community, right? Um, and so, you know, I'll start by saying that, you know, Yellow Face, the play, is, is, is pretty much autobiographical. Right, um, except for the character of uh, Marcus G. Right, Marcus G is the only kind of made-up character um, in that play. Um, everyone else, um, they, they are obviously it's autobiographical. So uh, David Henry Wong's uh, character, right, is is after his own, um, is as after himself, right. Um, and so the the parents, right, um, they they are sort of you know. Um, modeled after uh, David Wong's um, actual parents, right? Um, the, um, the journalists, right? Um, all, all, of, all of the historical events are actually kind of like based on actual historical events, right? So like everything, like the newspaper articles that, they're, um, that they've included throughout the play, right? Um, and, and all of the other characters, they are based on actual people and actual events, right? Um, except for Marcus G, right? Um, and I'll talk more about that later. And so I'm going to start with um, kind of a biography um, of David Henry Wong, the, the writer, right? Um, he was born in uh, 1957 in LA, right, uh, to Henry uh, Henry Wong, a uh, banker, right? As as you uh, as you might know from the play, um, and Dorothy Wong, um, who was a a piano teacher, right? Um, and then he is the oldest of three children, right? He has two young sisters. Um, he received his bachelor's degree in English from Stanford University um, in 1979, and then attended Yale School of Drama. Uh, between 1980 and 1981, right? Um, and he took literature classes um, at Yale University. Um, um, he left once workshopping uh, of new plays uh, began since he already had a play being produced um, in New York, right? Right, so, so, so he has a, his, his sort of like educational background, right, um, is um, the theater and um, playwriting, right? Um, and uh, some of his uh, more notable, he, he wrote a lot, and, you know, he, you can Google him and there's, I don't know, like, I think 20 plays and opera and uh, all sorts of sort of like theatrical um, stuff, right? <laughs> um, he wrote a lot, but um, some of the more famous uh, Place that he wrote um, are called um, FOB or Fresh Off the Boat, right? Um, the Dance and the Railroad, 
um, family devotions, M Butterfly. M Butterfly is probably one of the most famous, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, Golden Child, uh, Flower Drum Song, um, Yellow Face, right, and uh, Chinglish, right. Um, so these are uh, plays that he's, he's written, right. Um, and, right, and so Wong's best known play uh, probably was uh, M Butterfly. Right, um, and it premiered uh, on Broadway in 1988, um, and you know it's 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 it it, it it did very well, and it, it it received I think a Tony Awards, which is you know like one of the like the the Oscar <laughs> for um, so the Oscar award kind of like equivalent for um, for theater in America, right. Um, so it won Best Play, uh, right, um, in the Tony Awards, um, and uh, David Henry Wong was the first uh, Asian American to to win um, uh, to to win that title in in the, the Tony Awards, right. So M Butterfly, kind of like it, M Butterfly, is kind of um, is within the genealogy of Miss Saigon. Right. Remember, remember in my uh, my lecture video on Miss Saigon, I talked about how uh, Miss Saigon has a history of how um, Asian American characters have been uh, portrayed in in European and American narratives. Right. So like this goes back to like Puccini's um, uh, opera called uh, Madame Butterfly. Right. Um, and so so. Madame Butterfly by Puccini, by Puccini um, I, I told you guys was was where Miss Saigon was based, right? Um, M Butterfly, which is almost a direct kind of ripoff of uh, Madame Butterfly by Puccini. M Butterfly was uh, was a play written by David Henry Wong, um, which was kind of of uh, an adaptation, but it, it, but it's it's very much like it. It's a deconstruction, I guess, right, of of uh, Puccini's uh, play *Madame Butterfly*. Right, um, it's it's doing a lot of things. It's deconstructing um, gender identities, race identities, right, um, um, and it's it's a it's a very kind of like weird but kind of like funny uh, play, right. Um, and if you know if you have an opportunity, I, I don't I don't know how you would watch it, but. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, and I, I, I don't even, but anyway, um, right, so, so, so M. Butterfly was his mo mo most uh, famous uh, play, right, um, and Yellow Face came up after M. Butterfly, right, so, so M. Butterfly uh, premiered on Broadway in 1988, right, um, and uh, it win all the awards, and you know uh, David Henry Wong became very popular. Um, and then Yellow Face uh, premiered in two thousand seven, right? So, um, so what? So almost twenty years, right? Um, yeah, so almost twenty years after um, after M Butterfly, <clears throat> and and he wrote you know a couple of plays. I think just one play. Um, in between, uh, and it was called uh, Face Value in 1993, which uh, Face Value is also referred to in the in in in, in Yellow Face, right? Um, and so, because of the popularity, right, of of M Butterfly and the success of M Butterfly, this kind of like gave, um, and you know, David Henry Wong being the first kind of like Asian American. Um, Asian, Asian Asian American, right, uh, to win uh, the Tony Awards, right. So this kind of like gave him that, um, um, I guess, the credibility, right, um, within kind of like Asian American community and Asian American activism, right. Um, that was kind of like pushing for representation, right. Um, and so. During you know, and and I already talked about the Miss Saigon scandal, right? Um, and and how um, how when they moved Miss Saigon from London to to New York, right? Uh, they 
they had planned to um, uh, to, to or they they gave the, the character of the engineer right to Jonathan Price um, who is you know a white actor right um, and so this this became a scandal when they came to America uh, because you know um, Asian American activists were saying that you know the the character of a of a Vietnamese uh, uh, or right the, the role of a Vietnamese character should be played by at least you know an an Asian American actor uh, and not a white actor because then that would mean that the white actor would be in yellow face right which is racist um, and so that that was kind of like that was that was the scandal right um, and and during that time right um, because of David Henry Wong's um, sort of popularity, right, and his sort of um, reputation as the sort of like leading Asian American playwright, um, he was asked to to sort of like you know to 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 give an opinion about about the matter, uh, which obviously um, he sort of like sided with Asian American activists um, and said you know um, this is you know. Uh, a white actor playing an Asian character um, in 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 a play is 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 you know um, is perpetuating yellow face right um, and and this should be condoned so 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 he so he did all of that uh, um, so he he became sort of like a spokesperson right um, for the Asian American community um, during this uh, during the scandal right. Um, but then eventually, right, um, they had to give in because, um, like I said before, um, uh, the, the producers of Miss Saigon was gonna was going to um, uh, to to back out of of uh, the production on Broadway, right? Which would mean that a lot of Asian uh, uh, actors and Asian American actors who were already in the play would also like lose their jobs, right? Um, and so. They ended up, you know, just like allowing uh, Jonathan Price uh, to uh, to play the role um, for the sake of of those other actors, um, and so during this time, right, um, it became kind of uh, for David Henry Wong as as a, you know, he 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 sided with the Asian American activists because, you know, there there is something important about representation, right. Um, but it also occurred to him that, you know, like how complex, I guess, how uh, race and representation is, right? That it's not just like, for him, it, 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 it was not enough that, you know, um, or I think he realized that it was not enough to just uh, put, you know, an Asian American to play um, an Asian character, right? To, to address the issue of race and representation, right? Um, and, so, and so this kind of like dilemma or this sort of like contradiction, I guess, right, that he was going through, um, right, like the, the simple fact that, yeah, like if, if we give the role, right, of, of an Asian character to an Asian uh, actor or Asian American actor, um, is that going to solve the issue of race, right? Is that going to solve the issue of representation, right? Um, and and so that that dilemma for him, uh, that contradiction, which you know for him, he's convinced that it's not going to solve it, right? Like the the issue of race um, is is way larger than than representation, right? Um, and so and so that contradiction um, for him um, was very sort of was very clear, right? Um, and and this sort of like leads him to to um, to write uh, Yellow Face, right? Because for him, like the issue was you know uh, more complex than just you know putting a, a, an Asian American face uh, to a, to an Asian character, right? Um, that is, the issue is is larger than than representation, right? Or that representation, right, is not enough, right? And and that's kind of and that's going to be kind of the theme of of this lecture, right? That um, that a lot of times we think about representation, right? And, and in the mainstream media, we always hear 
you know, that, oh, you know, Asian Americans need representation, uh, Black Americans need representation, you know, um, all sort of like ethnic groups, right, uh, need representation. Um, and while that argument is not inaccurate, right, um, because uh, people of color have been erased throughout the sort of cultural production of of uh, of, of America, right, throughout its throughout its its history, um, and so there is there is a lack of representation because you know American culture has been you know throughout history been focused on representing usually you know um, uh, uh, stories right of, of of white Americans right so so that has like in in, in that sort of in, in that sort of like history of representation um, other Americans who are not white um, have been sort of like erased or like put into the margins of representation right um, and so and so the fight now is is to be, is to be represented, right? Um, and so there is some truth to representation, right? Um, and there is some, there is a necessity to representation, um, political necessity to representation. But um, ultimately, what I want to suggest and uh, what I think David Henry Wong and Viet Nguyen um, are also suggesting through their works is that you know, being able to be, or representation, right, is not enough, or or being, uh, or just you know putting an Asian face um, onto your TV, right, um, is is not enough, and it's not uh, it's not enough to sort of like address the sort of like the long history of race, right, um, and it's it's not enough to sort of, um, or or that representation also has its its limits, um, it also has its problems. Right, um, right, and and, I'll, and I'll, I'll I'll talk more about that uh, later. So right, so so the limits of representation, I guess, <laughs> is going to be the the theme um, of this lecture. So I guess I'll start with um, the the form right of of the play, um, and. If, if you notice, like in, in, in the beginning, right, well, um, if, if you, in, in the very first part of, of, of the play, um, uh, David Henry Wong and, and the producer, uh, or one of the producers, I think, said something about, uh, about the play, right? And they said that this is kind of like, um, that this specific play, right, um, it's, a, it's a stage play that was written by David Henry Wong, um, and it is uh, adapted specifically for um, for YouTube, right? Um, and so, you know, it, it was not like a play that came out in the theater, right? Or or in the movie theaters, right? Um, it was actually like it was it was uh, created directly to put into YouTube, right? Um, and so that's that's one of of the main qualities, right, of the play. But then obviously it has a sort of um, um, a, you know, it's it's kind of like a it's it's like a real film, right? Um, it's the length of a film, um, so it's a play. It's also a film, um, but it's there's also an, an aspect of documentary to it, right? Especially because you know the the play itself is very, um, it it plays on like kind of like a docudrama, right? Where where it takes kind of like uh, real real life events and real life people. Right, um, uh, and uh, and created a narrative based on on uh, actual historical events, right? So it's almost kind of like a documentary. It's kind of like a film, um, but it's you know it's made for YouTube, right? Um, so 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 there's all of that, right? Um, and you know, as I mentioned in my email, right? Um, I talked about like how Broadway uh, in New York. Right, um, it's very much a. Um, it's a very specific kind of the, uh, theater experience because 
you know, when you're, I've never been to Broadway, but like my, <laughs> my sense is that, you know, when, when you're in this spaces, you know, uh, there's a very clear distinction between audience um, and the stage, right? I talked about the fourth wall and breaking the fourth wall and stuff like that, right? But, but there's, there's a, you know, there's, there's a, like a proper decorum, right? You, you go to, you go to a theater, uh, uh, um, and then, you know, you sit down, you, you, you don't, you don't eat, you don't, um, you know, you, 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 you know, you're, you have to be quiet, right? Like the audience has to be quiet, you have to be focused on, on what you're watching, right? Um, you can't, you know, you can't talk or whatever, right? So, so there's a very specific kind of, um, and, and you, you know, the, the audience, right, they, they have to, you know, they have to pay for a ticket, right? And it's, you know, the, the uh, Broadway tickets are expensive, I think. They're like 100 to $200. Um, maybe the cheapest ones are like 50 to $100. Um, and so it's something that you have to pay for, and then you have to kind of like dress up for, and then you, you go to a theater, and then you sit down, and, and you know, it's like, it's, 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 it's a whole thing, right, to go to Broadway. Um, and, you know, and, and as an audience, you have to be sort of like, you know, people who go to Broadway are supposed to be kind of like cultured, right, or like you have to kind of like know how to act um, as an audience in, 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 in a, uh, in, in, a, in a Broadway theater, right? Um, and so, you know, so like all of that, right? <laughs> That's like all that proper decorum when you go to a, to a, um, a theater. Um, that, that all goes away, right? <laughs> when, when, you put a, a, when you put a stage performance um, on YouTube, right? Obviously you watch it on your own time, it's free. Um, you can eat, you can talk, you can multitask while you watch it, right? Um, you know, when I watch it on my computer, I always have like, like one screen, you know, watching it, and then I'll be like doing emails or whatever, right? So um, you can do whatever you want. You can dress however you want um, when you're watching it on your own. Um, and so there, it's a very kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of audience, right, that it's trying to reach. Um, and yeah, and, and, and so and, and, and so you know, like the the play is aware of that, right? Um, and the director and uh, David Wong is, is is aware that you know, um, and 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 we see David Wong sort of like agree to um, to, to to this uh, adaptation, right? Because in the past, so so M Butterfly um, was a stage play. Then it was actually adapted to uh, a, a film in 1996, I think, right? Um, where um, it was adapted to a film, and it, it was like the adaptation was a very kind of like a realistic drama um, adaptation, right? Um, and uh, David Henry Wong actually didn't uh, approve of it because he didn't want his play to be turned into a realist uh, drama. Right, because he is kind of like deconstructing realist representation, right, in M. Butterfly, and so when it was adapted as a realist drama, um, he he didn't he didn't like that, um, and he didn't agree to. I mean, they still you know filmed it because you know the the um, the producers were able to buy the rights, right, uh, and um, right, so so they filmed it and they uh, distributed it. Um, and you can look it up. Um, I think Jeremy Irons is in it. <clears throat> anyway, so so that sort of adaptation, right, was not approved of by um, by David Henry Wong. But you know, um, money talks. Um, and so for this, um, because you know he, he spoke uh, b before before, so he actually agreed to this uh, because the way that it's been constructed by the director, um, he actually agrees with, right. Um, and, and he likes also the idea that it's being produced uh, in YouTube and um, that sort of like reaches a different kind of demographics, a different kind of audience, right? Uh, then, you know, your typical kind of like privileged uh, space in Broadway, right? Um, right, so, so, so I think one way to describe um, you know, and, and there's there's this term that that we use in um, um, in 
in um, in theorizing uh, specifically, you know, theater, right, um, in plays, right, is this uh, thing called performativity, right, uh, which which is you know related to performance, right, um, uh, and and this can you know vary from like not from like actual dance performance to like you know, performance and stage, right? So, so the term sort of like performativity um, is, is related to the politics of performance, right? Which means that, you know, um, when something, when, when, when I call something performative, right? Um, that means that, you know, it's aware that it, it, it is performing, right? Something is aware that of, of its performativity or um, of its constructedness, right? Um, and so it's it's aware of itself as a performance. I hope that's making sense, right? Um, so it's it's self-aware. So like when I, I talk, and, and there's a difference between something that's performative and something that is realist, right? Because a realist uh, representation um, is focused on convincing you that this is real. Right, so so it portrays itself as, you know, as close to real as possible, right? And so that's why um, uh, TV shows like Game of Thrones, um, a lot of realist TV shows, right? They spend a lot of money, you know, using CGI and um, uh, creating this like elaborate landscape, right, to make everything very realistic, right? Um, and, you know, making sure that their, their accents are, you know, um, are, are perfect, you know, like when they have, when, when you have an American actor playing a British character, they have, uh, what they call kind of, um, accent, uh, uh, what, what are they called? Like accent tutors, right? Or like someone who's, whose job is to make sure that, that the actor's accent is, is correctly, uh, uh, conveyed. Right, um, and so so like all of these things uh, that that a realist representation does is to kind of convince you that this is real, right? Which is you know to fool you <laughs> that this is real because obviously it's not. It's it's all it's, and we know this, right? It's it's CGI. It's it's you know um, or like Anne Hathaway, for example, right? Playing British characters with with her British accent. Obviously, we know that that's fake because. <laughs> um, Anne Hathaway is American, um, and I mean she does it well, right? Um, but, right. Um, so, so we 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 know that this is not real, right? But they want to sort of like convince you that that it's real, because they re they uh, they re represent it in a in a realistic way, right? Uh, performative performativity, right? Um, is like a performative. Um, representation right is, is something that's aware that it's it's uh, constructed right um, and so it, it tells you the audience that it is aware that it is constructed right so so take for example you know the opening scene of um, of yellow face right where we, we get a shot of the stage right and the lights and the camera and Sort of like it, it was kind of like a, you know, it, it, the 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 camera was was um, sort of on the audience, right? But we get a clear sort of like a, a still picture of of the stage, right? Um, and so that immediately tells you that this is a performance, right? We're not trying to fool you that this is real, right? Even though you know the events are real, right? Um, the historical sort of references are real. Right, um, the play immediately tells you that this is not real, right? That this that this is performative, that this is constructed, right? Just by giving us a still picture of the stage with all the lights, with all you know the equipments and um, all of that stuff, right? And you can kind of like see this throughout um, uh, the play, even the fact, right, that they use. Um, only like nine characters to play various, or only nine actors, right, to play various characters, right? That in itself, 
right, is is a way of telling us that yeah, these actors are actually just playing a part, right? Um, so yeah, so like all of these like little things that um, that the play is doing, right, with the actors is to kind of is to make 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 it known to you, the audience, that that this is just a performance, that this is you know something that's constructed, right? Um, Right, so so the constructedness of the play, right, of, of the of the style of the play, right, I think is actually very important because not only does it tell you that it it, it itself is constructed, but it also sort of con you can also connect it to the issue of race that um, the play is addressing, right, which is that race is constructed, right. Um, and and when I when I use the word race, I don't I don't only mean um, the difference the different ethnic sort of differences, right? Um, that you know, someone is Chinese, for example, or someone is Filipino, or someone is you know from whatever country, for whatever region, right? Um, and, and that's that's one aspect of, of race, right? Is is to sort of like to make a distinction between people from different countries, people from different regions, people from different continents, right? Um, people with different skin colors, right? So that's 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 one way that race is sort of um, adapted as as a distinction between people um, and people's histories and people's sort of like skin color, right? The other aspect of race that I want to sort of like suggest is um, is, is the constructedness of race, right? Especially in, um, in in the European and in the American context, right? Um, and how race has been created to to, um, to 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 make a distinction between. Um, uh, European race, which is white, uh, white people, right? White Europeans, right? And and the race of the other, right? Um, and that's a, that's a very clear distinction. Like race is the the very sort of like basis of of um, race in in Western civilization, right? Is to make the distinction between uh, white European race and those who are not right um and then there's like variations of those who are not european asians um, africans uh, south americans etc right um and so and so that sort of um i think that aspect of of how race has been um Consumed in 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 European and American civilization, right? Um, as something that is other than white, right? Um, is I think what is important here in in, in the play, right? Um, and and so right and so so race and and I, this is something that I you know I told you guys in 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 the Miss Saigon. Um, um, in the Miss Saigon uh, lecture, right, that, um, you know, like race of, um, and that uh, black people, right, have been considered as other than white, right? Um, um, and, and, the, and also like the distinction of, of yellow, right, as something, and this is, um, this is something that uh, was, was used, right, in the 1922, um, uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, trial, right, um, against uh, the the Japanese immigrant who is trying to pass as white, right, um, or or who is trying to become an American citizen, right. He's trying to white pass. He was trying to pass as white because he had white skin, right, um, as American citizen. But then he was rejected because then he was referred to as yellow, as as not white. Right. So, so there, there is, there is a sort of like a history of, of how, um, 
people of color have been sort of um, rejected outside of this uh, um, of the category of the white race, right? Um, right. So, so in many ways, race is not just about ethnicity anymore, right? Um, but race is is sort of a way of taking someone's sort of like body, right? Um, and putting a disc uh, kind of descriptors or uh, sort of um, putting um, kind of like putting cultural meaning right in, into um, the bodies of people, right? So, so throughout history, um, like different kinds of cultural meanings um, have been sort of like inflicted on the bodies of not, you know, not just people of color, but also like whiteness, right? Um, the fact that like a narrative that, you know, like whiteness as, as a, a sort of like a, a, a supreme race, right? Which is, you know, the, the, the history of white supremacy, um, that, that sort of like narrative, right, was, was constructed Right to 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 justify uh, colonial violence, right, um, and so um, with that is also the writing of of meaning into the bodies of you know of black people, um, of of Asians, of of Hispanics, right. Um, that when when you have this type of skin color, that you are this, right. So so that that idea that you know that just being born brown or just being born black or just being born white, right? That that you immediately are sort of given some kind of meaning, right? Um, sort of, so, so that's, that's sort of like how um, race, right, um, operates. Um, is that even before you're born, right? Um, or right immediately, like right after you were born, Right, you, your your identity is already predetermined for you, right? Depending on the color of your skin, de depending on where you're from, right? So, so there is a w there is a way in which you know race in that context is definitely determined by you know the historical construction of of race, right? And um, nothing to do with one's own color, but the the meanings. Right, that is being put into the color of someone's skin. So I think in this way, right, so like understanding the constructedness of race, um, it's actually interesting the way that David Wong sort of created this character of Marcus G, right? Um, Marcus G is obviously, you know, Caucasian, right? Um, and as you know, he's sort of like a lot of things happen to where he ended up sort of accidentally. Um, auditioning for uh, an Asian American position, right? Um, and, and then he was hired, right, kind of uh, mistakenly, uh, or he was hired because he was mistaken as having kind of um, Asian American or Asian roots, right? Um, and, and so all of Right, so like all, all of this kind of like coincidental things, right? Um, sort of put Marcus G in that in that position, right? That he's you know a, uh, an Asian American like white passing, um, but then he he eventually kind of like um, embodied, right? I guess that identity, uh, and he eventually sort of he you know. Um, he educated himself about the issues of, you know, uh, issues in um, uh, in, in Asian American communities, right? He's, in, he's sort of like he sympathized with with um, uh, the the experiences of Asian American people, right? And I, I think you know he he like genuinely cared, right, or wanted to be a part of the community, right, even though um, he was white passing. Or not just he was white passing, but he's white, right? Um, so so he's sort of like embodied, and you know, and you can you can refer to that as like transracial, right? Uh, people who um, 
who sort of like em embody um, a different kind of race than than what they are sort of like born with or whatever. Um, and so, and so in many ways, right? You can kind of like you can sympathize with Marcus G, and you can kind of. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, that he genuinely cares for, you know, the Asian American community, right? But then, as we are also told, right, it's not, it's not that simple. You know, you can just, you know, you're white and, and you want to be Asian American, that you can just, you know, be an Asian American because obviously you don't have, you, you, um, you probably don't sort of like experience the same kinds of experiences that Asian American people in America, right, have to um, to go through, right? Like there might be issues of racism and insecurities and anxieties, right, that's unique to Asian American experience that you did not. So like how much can you really, um, how much can you really sympathize, right? Or how much can you really be Asian American if you don't, you know, have this sort of like similar anxieties as Asian American? So, like all of these things, and it, it's not it's not that simple, right? And David Henry Wong knows that it's not that simple, right? Um, that you know one can identify genuinely, but then one is ultimately um, like one's experience is ultimately limited, right? Uh, because you know people ha are are treated differently, right? Especially in terms of race uh, in this country, um, systemically uh, and otherwise, right? Um, and so that scene, right, where, um, I think it's on, let me see, it's on Act 1, it's like towards the end of Act 1, right, when, um, David Henry Wong and Marcus G, uh, and, uh, Gis Jin, Gis Jin is a, um, uh, is an Asian American novelist and critic, right, um, when they were on stage, kind of like it was an interview, right? And there were like Asian American students in the audience, right? Um, and and how they kind of, you know, like in, in the beginning of, of that scene, right? Um, David Wong was trying to justify the fact that, um, you know, he hired um, an Asian American, or, you know, a, a white looking man to play an Asian American character, right? Because previously he has condemned right um jonathan price who played the engineer in miss saigon right so so he, he was kind of he was justifying that fact right and then the more he justified it the more he sort of fell into his own trap <laughs> and ended up lying about it right um saying that um, and i don't know maybe it's, it's not like a real lie right I mean, maybe there is some part <laughs> one ounce of marcus g that's you know um that's from Siberia and, you know, that makes him sort of Asian or whatever, right? And so, and so Marcus G was aware that, you know, that David Wong was kind of like lying about, about his identity. Um, but then when he sort of like felt the solidarity between, um, uh, or the, the kind of like the acceptance that this Asian American students uh, in the audience, right, were sort of like giving him, um, and, and he felt a kind of like community with them, right? Um, he started to kind of like embody this Asian American identity, right? Um, and he sort of like felt like, oh yeah, I can, I can belong, you know, these are cool people and I can belong in, in this community, right? Um, and so he, he started to sort of like embody that. Um, and, and that was, that was a very kind of a strange scene, right? Because, um, the more, like, if you notice, right, like David Henry Wong sort of like, it started off with him lying about, um, um, about Marcus G's uh, racial identity, right? Um, and then the audience sort of like accepting Marcus G, right? Because someone like David Henry Wong, you know, who's a credible, sort of like spokesperson of the Asian American community says that he is, that, that Marcus G is Asian American, so they just take him for that. And so, right, and then there was that kind of like switch where um, Marcus G started embodying the Asian American identity, and then David Wong started like looking at him, looking at Marcus G, right, and getting confused and kind of, you know, 
um, he was he was uneasy. I think is the right word. He was uneasy about like what was happening, right? How sort of how changeable, right? People's ideas of race is, right? Um, and that and it, and it's very conflicting to him that, you know, someone like Mike, you know, someone like Mark Zuji could like easily in like one conversation switch and you know be an Asian American, right? So like, what does that mean about race that? Uh, someone you know someone like marcus g can you know easily embody it and be easily accepted to sort of like an asian american community just because of some some weird lie right um what does it mean that it's that easy to to pass right um between races right and so these are the kinds of questions i think that um that he's addressing right in this play so i think one of the main um the main kind of uh, themes, right, or, or 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 sort of like the main concept, right, that that Yellowface is doing, um, is to to sort of is to sort of like balance uh, two things about race, right, um, and so. Yellowface is not is not um, doesn't have a clear answer, right? So I, that's probably something that you figured out, right? After watching the touch, so it's it's not like it's not telling you um, what it means to be Asian American, like or like who is considered Asian American, right? Or who is not considered. So so Yellowface is sort of like as as a film and and as a play. Is wants to kind of appeal to to the audience as what what it wants to do, right? Is make you feel uneasy about your ideas of race. I think, right? So so instead of of a of a play that wants you to to take a side, right? Uh, instead of a play that um, gives you an answer about race, right? That this is what it means to be, or whatever, right? Um, it, it's a play that makes you question um, your ideas about race, right? Um, and so and it's so it's okay that, you know, that at the end of it, like there, you don't have an answer, a clear answer, right? That's exactly what the play is doing, is to, is to not give you an answer, but is to, que to make you question um, existing answers about things, right? Um, and this starts with the, with the title, right? Um, and that's another thing that I want to, you know, like the titles are usually for me, like the titles, the first, um, the first sentence of a story or the the last sentence of a story. These are very um, important parts of of a narrative, right? That sort of like hints at um, what what the uh, what the themes, what the concepts are, right, um, of of the narrative. So, so yellowface, um, the way that it's been sort of used in the past, right, is usually one word, right, and so and yellowface as one word um, has been used as a as an identifier of of Asian Americans, um, um, and also an identifier of racism against Asian Americans, right? Um, and, and so the play itself, the title, if you notice it, is in two words, yellow face, instead of one word, right? Um, and so he, he broke that, uh, David Wong sort of like broke the words into two, or broke the word into two, yellow and face, right? And and that seems like a simple kind of like, you know, meaningless act, right? But what it's actually doing is sort of like breaking that idea of what it means to be um, Asian American, right? So 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 there is a kind of like a conception of like what yellow face means, right? But what he's doing by breaking those the title into two, right, um, is suggesting to us that he is breaking. Right, our ideas of 
of what it means to be sort of Asian American or what it means to be to have a yellow face, right? Um, and that also sort of like tells us that his breaking by breaking it um, that it, it is a const it, it is constructed right. The idea of race and the idea of yellow face is is a constructed one, right? Something that's been put together, right? And so what he's doing is breaking that in order to, to examine uh, how it's been put together, right? So, so like little things like that, right? Um, the title um, sort of like hints at uh, what, um, what, what, what the themes of, of, the, of the play uh, are, right? Um, and so I, I think the main thing that, <clears throat> the main things that um, it's, it's grappling with, right? <clears throat> Is that it's it's the idea of race as something that's <coughs> excuse me um, the idea of race as something that's fluid right and constructed and so fluid um, but then there's also that aspect right that um, racism still exists right um, and we can't just easily say that. You know, oh, um, race is fluid, and like anyone can go in and out of race, right? Which, you know, as we can see, that's possible, right? That people can go in and out of race, and <clears throat> and saying that you're Asian American doesn't limit to, you know, to Korean, and and this is why um, rep race and representation is interesting to me and my own research is that <clears throat> um, Filipino the the place of Filipino Americans within Asian America um, is actually uh, weird, right? <laughs> because um, um, Filipino Americans are uh, of the Philippines was the only American and the only Spanish colony in Asia, right? And so Filipino Americans don't really, you know, for the most part, don't really look like, say. You know, Japanese Americans, Chinese Americans, right? Because we have sort of like a Spanish history, um, you know, being <coughs> colonized by Spain for almost 400 years, right? So um, we have a lot of sp Spanish blood going throughout the islands. Um, and there's also, you know, the names of Filipinos are usually um, very, very Spanish, right? So so Filipinos are, you know, there's, there's a book, um, It's, it's called um, the Latinos of Asia, right? Um, and and it's kind of it's it's tracing that history of um, of Filipinos, right? Um, and and how a lot of Filipinos connect more with their Latin um, or Latino sort of counterparts because you know um, Latin America, uh, Central America, and South America. A lot of a lot of those countries were also colonized by Spain, right? And so we have, uh, we have a lot of sim Filipinos have a lot of similarities with, um, um, you know, um, for example, like Mexicans, right, Puerto Ricans, right, um, and so <clears throat> um, because because of that history, you know, like uh, Christianity or Catholicism, for example, right, um, and so the Philippines and Filipino Americans sort of like. Um, exist in this like weird in between space, right? That's not quite Asian American, as you know, as Asian America sort of like because Asian America, Asian American identity is largely linked to uh, Japanese experience, um, Korean, um, Chinese, right? Um, those are the sort of like the three countries that has sort of monopolized, right? The conversation within. Um, Asian America, and so like, how do we account for other kinds of Asian Americans, right? And so the Filipino uh, American experience is is very good, uh, is a good way of sort of like critiquing the limits of um, representation because, you know, it's hard to represent <laughs> Filipino Americans because we exist in different spaces, right? In Asian America, in sort of Latin America, in America, right? Um, 
Right, so, so I had a point. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so like on the, on the one hand, right, um, what, what, uh, the, what David Wong is doing with Yellow Face is that, is to, um, is to describe to us how, how constructed race is and how fluid it is, right? But then on the other hand, he's also acknowledging the fact that race issues and racism, right, still exist, right? You know, and, and it's, it's, very, it's very much alive up until today, right? You know, just, just last week, there was the uh, shooting of um, uh, a black man uh, in, um, oh crap, was it in Georgia? Um, yeah, just for like running, and then he was like sus he was suspected uh, as a as a thief, I think, and he was just you know going for a run. Um, <clears throat> so right, so like racism against people of color is very much you know very much alive. Um, this pandemic right has been blamed on um, Asian Americans right, um, and that's obviously a very sort of like a racist thing, um, and. You know, someone racist like Donald Trump being elected as president, right? That's obviously that that means that you know there are people who still support racism in this country. A lot of people actually still either not support racism, but you know don't care about racism, right? That they're that they're okay to um, vote that kind of person, um, and so and so yeah. So there 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 are. It's, it's very much like the institution of racism is very much alive um, in this country. Um, and, so, and so David Wong wants to point to, to acknowledge, right, that even though race is a very fluid thing that you can go in and out of, some people, right, still suffer the consequences of racial profiling, right? Um, and, you know, um, and some some people still you know like suffer more right get killed or go to prison or whatever right because they they are sort of like racially profiled right and so and so it's not sort of like so so the, the issue of of representation and the, and the issue of fighting for um kind of equality i guess um is, is still like it's not something that we can just you know say that it's over Right, because obviously um, it's not over. Um, so yeah, so 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 what he's doing is just like managing those things. Like instead of saying that, you know, either like race is done because it's um, because anyone can be whoever, whomever, right? Um, or saying that you know we should make distinctions uh, about race, right? He's he's not doing any of those. He's actually allowing those two to to exist, right? That yes, race is fluid. But then racial profiling still exists, right? Um, and so yeah, and so I think the point of the play is that you know we have to be uneasy, right, um, or um, uncomfortable, right, about about race, <laughs> I guess. Um, and that's a good segue to Viet Nguyen um, because he is sort of like talking about this uncomfortable love uneasy love for America, right? Right, so, so now I'm going to start talking about um, Viet Nguyen's um, uh, Time Magazine article, right, um, called I Love America, That's Why I Have to Tell the Truth About It, right? Um, And, and Viet Nguyen is, um, he's a novelist, right? Um, he, he wrote The Sympathizer, um, which is a, um, I think it, it, it won a Pulitzer Prize. Um, but he's also um, a PhD, uh, or he also has a PhD, right? Um, and he's a professor at USC uh, right now. Um, so he's also an academic, right? Um, and he's a novelist. Um, and right, and and so it's not it's not common, right, for academics to usually, you know, like write kind of an article like this. I, I don't know. 
I, I don't think it's that common. So, so you know, like, and and Viet Nguyen is all, is very, um, he's very sort of he's one of those few academics who are um, very much kind of visible on on mainstream media, right? Um, he did an interview with, um, oh crap, uh, Seth Seth Myers, right? Um, he had, did an interview with Seth Myers um, a couple of years ago, um, and is always on Twitter, right? And he's always this is not his own. He has a lot of um, he has a lot of articles like this um, uh, in New York, in the New York Times, um, and Time Magazine, right? Um, and which you know um, I really appreciate because um, he's sort of like he tries to. Um, you know, he, he writes like academic books too, but um, but he sort of like tries to like reach out to um, to to a larger sort of like demographic, right? By by keeping a, a mainstream uh, presence, right? Um, and so and so yeah, and so like when I read this um, a couple of years ago, I was you know it was, it was a very very moving um, uh, um, article, right? Um, and, and I think he's really sort of, you know, just like, uh, just like, you know, um, the play Yellowface, right? He is sort of like making us, uh, rethink, right? What it means to be American, right? Um, and what it means to, 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 to identify, right, as, as American. Right. And how sort of, you know, we should sort of like accept um, the sort of the dark side, I guess, of, of, uh, of America, right? Um, because it is part of, of American history, right? That it sort of like committed genocide um, towards Native Americans, right? Killed a lot of Native Americans when they came to, when sort of like European uh, Europeans came to America uh, to colonize it. Um, uh, yeah, so 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 there's that history. There's also the ex uh, the history of imperial expansion, right? Um, that that uh, America sort of did to to colonize Guam, to colonize the Philippines, to colonize Puerto Rico, to colonize Hawaii, um, and so so this like effort to to expand. Right was also a very violent one, right? Um, and obviously, you know, the uh, the U.S. Vietnam War, right, was was a very very violent one. Um, and so, the, the history of expansion, right, American expansion, um, has been one of great violence and you know genocide, genocidal violence, right? Um, and so, so yeah, so like one part of um, I think what Viet Nguyen is trying to do here is to make us to make us uneasy, right, about how we feel about this country, and to suggest that feeling uneasy about this country is is okay, is is normal, and it's a it's a it's a healthy, right, kind of uh, relationship, right, um, rather than one that sort of romanticizes um, their. Uh, relationship with nationality right um, yeah and and so and and so I appreciate that about about Viet Nguyen's writing uh, is that you know there there are a lot of writers who sort of just reject America and just you know talk shit about America which is fair right America has done a lot of you know bad shit um, and but then you know, ultimately, like, I don't know how productive it is, because, you know, after all, we still live in America, right? And, and we have to, like, live with it. Um, and, you know, and, you know, as he also mentioned here, right, there are a lot of things that he can do uh, in America. Um, the very fact that he can criticize America, right, um, while being in America um, is something that, you know, he couldn't, he probably can't do um, in Vietnam because you know there are sort of like stricter um, censorship, 
uh, laws uh, in Vietnam. I'm guessing, I'm not really familiar, but he's saying here, right? So, so, so yeah, so there is kind of like a love-hate relationship, right? But it's not even like a love-hate, like, like he's saying here, it's not like a lo love it or leave it uh, relationship. It should be one that's like, it should be one that's like of love, but to understand love as something that manifests in different ways, right? Um, or to understand love as something that understands um, or, or something that, that knows of its sort of like dark side, right? That, that love is not all sort of like romance and beauty and utopia, right? That there is sort of like a, uh, an aspect of love that is violent, right? Um, and so I think one of... Um, And it's it's just it's just it's just a good read, and it's also a very moving uh, article, right? Um, especially that part where he was um, <clears throat> talking about his dad, right? Um, and this is a good kind of like example of how he talks about like the complexity of this idea of love for for one's for one's parents, for one's country, right? Um, that it's actually a complex one, right? Um, because you know, in in many cultures, especially maybe in American culture, you know, like this idea that you know you sort of like say I love you, right, is is the only basis for love, right? But what he's saying here is that there are other ways of saying I love you without saying I love you, right? Um, uh, the fact that um, you know when uh, when his father, the fact that you know his father is sort of like works very hard and, you know, hardly gets any rest, right? Um, just to be able to provide for them, right? For, for their children and for their children's future, right? Um, that to him, like, even though he's never heard his, his father um, say, I love you to him, like those acts of sacrifices, right? Um, is, should be uh, sort of equivalent to um, expressions of love, right? Um, also, like the way he's talking about, um, you know, um, just asking someone to, uh, if they were hungry, right, or if, if they have eaten yet, right. Um, and this is also a very kind of like a Filipino thing, you know, you go to a Filipino's house, right, um, and a lot of times, you know, their way of sort of like welcoming you is, you know, have you eaten yet, right. Uh, or you know, like they just like they don't they don't care. <laughs> like Filipinos don't care if you've eaten or not, right? They'll just kind of like start giving you food, right? Um, and that's sort of like that sort of that that gesture, right? Like, and even though you know some Filipinos are not very good at saying "I love you" or whatever, right? But then um, that gesture to right of of feeding other people um, that could that should also be read as sort of like love, right? Um, and so yeah, so so he's sort of like using this idea of love to sort of like relate ideas of identity, right? Uh, ideas of race, right? Um, and how like love should be complicated and uneasy and uncomfortable at times. Love is violent, right? Love is, you know, so many things, right? The same way with race, right? That it's sort of like constructed. It's sort of uneasy. It's it's discomforting. It's you know, it's fluid, uh, the same way with identity, right? So, so I think like all of this, um, uh, what I think is common, right, between like how they are talking about um, about race uh, in these uh, in Yellowface and also in in Viet Nguyen's article, is is to, to to ask the reader, right, to to have a complex relationship with identity, right, um, and with race, right, and with love, and with nationality, right, um, to sort of, to sort of understand these sort of uh, concepts, right, as something more complex than, you know, than one thing, right, um, as actually having uh, very, um, 
very complex histories. Um, it has its limitations. It's vi it's violent, right? Um, and and being able to understand race and identity, right, in that way, um, is actually you know um, what I think is they're they're suggesting, right? Being able to understand it uh, in a complex way is sort of like the greatest expression of love, right? Um, that there is. Um, so I think I'll just um, I'll just end there um, and and for your assignment that's due on Sunday, right? Um, and I know some of you um, I've, I've given an extension to um, until Sunday. And so if you want to submit your response paper to Yellowface or Viet Nguyen, um, if you want to give it to me on Monday or on Tuesday next week, uh, that's that's perfectly fine. If it's a couple of days late, uh, it's not a big deal. Um, but but yeah, just just write something. Like you can even just like pick, you know, that that passage from Viet Nguyen's uh, about um, if you know if there's if there's something in Viet Nguyen's uh, essay that you you found. <coughs> That you found moving, right? Just pick a passage and then you know, talk about it, right? If you want to kind of like share your own experience with, you know, that's kind of like similar to what Vietnamese was saying, then you know, uh, write about that, right? Um, you could also do a response, right? Um, uh, on uh, on the play Yellow Face. So so really, like you can write about anything about this too. Um, these two things about the play and the, the article right and so as for the final essay um, I won't talk too much about it yet I'll, I'll talk more about it um, next week in the next video but just to give you kind of like a sense right um, I will so so the last essay is is writing about literature right um, and you know for this class, we 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 watched Miss Saigon and Yellowface, right? So that's literature, right? Um, and so I will. So you have to sort of like write about. Um, so you have to like pick a literature, right, and then write about it, um, and write about sort of like certain themes, right, um, about about this uh, about the literature that you've chosen. So so for that paper, I will let you choose between um, Yellowface or um, Miss Saigon. Um, I suggest kind of like writing one um, or the other. I mean, you can write about both, but I think that's it's too much. Um, and the paper that I'm requiring is very short, and I don't know if you'll be able to uh, write about, you know, especially if you, you know, like write a comparative thing. Um, that might be too much, but, you know, uh, if you want to, I'm open to that. Um, so that's one option, right, is to write about either Yellowface or Miss Saigon or both. Um, but I will also give you the option to write about other kinds of literature, right, that you want to write about, right? If you have a favorite novel, if you have a favorite, I wouldn't say novel maybe. Yeah, if you have a favorite novel or... I just think novels are too long <laughs> for for what we're doing here, right? Um, so even like a short story, if you have a favorite short story, if you have a favorite TV show, um, if you have you know a few favorite poem that you want to write about, um, you know, just just run it past me, um, and you know I will most likely tell you to to write about you know anything. But um, if you feel strongly about that, right? Um, but I encourage you to write about Yellowface or Miss Saigon since, since it's in our class. But if you want to write about something else, um, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, um, or, you know, I'll, uh, you, you, can, you can do that. Um, but, um, but yeah, but try to like run your pass, run your idea past me. Um, so I can kind of give you some suggestions about it. Um, but yeah, but don't... Uh, that's still a couple of weeks from now, which is going to be fast arriving, as we all know. Um, but yeah, start thinking about maybe what you want to write about for the third essay.
right. I'll see you in the next video.